communications. Yeah. Keeping you busy, huh? Keeping you busy. Yes, sir. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Doing good. Doing good. Can't complain. How are you? Good to see you. I'm looking for a good man to do video, audio, and promotion. Say video, promotion. You got a good man? A young man up there in the head. He's a Methodist. I need him. He works in all communications, telecommunications. I want him. I'll talk to him. No, I gotta have him. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good audio man too. Right. Good audio man. Audio. Is it good? Yes, sir. Putting that word for me. I need it. That's where I was going. I was going up to the college to see if I can find somebody.
through some delays, disappointments, and oftentimes some obstacles that seemed insurmountable at the time, but somehow we managed to pers uh, persist, and again, through the cooperation of, of many people, bring this project to fruition. So thank you for being with us and joining in this celebration. We have a number of, of guests with us, so if you will bear with me, I would like to recognize uh, some individuals. When I call your name, if you will rise and be acknowledged, and if you will hold all the applause to the end, I think we can go through this <coughs> as uh, expeditiously as possible. We'll start with uh, Ms. Pat Fitzgerald, who is here representing uh, Congresswoman Renee Jones. Pat, where are you? Thank you. We also have from the NC House Representative David Lewis. Our Harnett County Register of Deeds, Kim Hardrow. Our Harnett County Clerk of Court, Marshall Johnson. Jim Bergen, Chairman, Harnett County Board of Commissioners. Commissioners, County Commissioners Barbara McCoy, Abe Elmore, and Gordon Springer. There's people behind me, I can't see where they're standing. <laughs> uh, we have the uh, Harnett County Board of Education, we have Vivian Bennett. We have Stan Williams, the Harnett County Superintendent of Schools and Assistant Superintendent Brooks Matthews and Dan Honeycutt. We have with us, of course, our Mayor, Oscar Harris, members of the City uh, Dunham City Council, Buddy Manis, Cornell Robinson, Frank McLean, Billy Tart, Billy Barfield. We have our manager from the city of Dunn, Ron Lawford. Ronnie, where are you? We also have our assistant city manager, Steve Newshaper. <laughs> there you go. We have with, our, with us our, our chief of police, J.D. Pope. And Dunn City Elect uh, Town, uh, Tillman Pope. I'm not sure what Dunn City Elect means. City. City. <laughs> I didn't think that looked right. <laughs> Tell me not whether you've been promoted or demoted. <laughs> we also have with us our Dunn Chamber of Commerce President, Hope Tindall. <clears throat> and our President Elect, Terry Whitney. We got the short end of that stick here. <laughs> We also have from the Irwin Town Council, uh, Gabe Wilson. Gabe here. Um, let's give all these in the <laughs> We have a very interesting program for you, I believe. We will try not to, uh, to run too long so that you will have plenty of time to engage in the tours and take part in refreshments and be able to view the handiwork of uh, this wonderful facility. So at this time, I will ask the Reverend Dennis H. Manuel, pastor of East Granville Street Church of God, to come, of God of Prophecy, to come forward and deliver our invocation. Thank you. Good afternoon. At this time, we'll our invocation, you may stand if you like. Please pray with us. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you in humble gratitude, thanking you for another day. Today we thank you for this gathering of visionaries and supporters that have come to celebrate 
themselves <coughs> accomplishments of this great vision. This place has been named an enrichment center. We know that it is your will that in all things we be enriched by your grace and prosper. Therefore, we are hilarious today and happy that you have chosen this great city for another assignment of enriching and challenging life, changing lives. We pray your continued grace upon us that we as a city and a community, that our light will continue to shine so men may see your good works and glorify your name. We thank you for your blessings. In the name of Jesus, amen. amen. At this time, uh, we will have representatives from the Police Athletic League uh, who will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance.
and in deep appreciation of what you have helped us accomplish. We have so many people and agencies to thank. Without you and your agency and the respective part you contributed, it would all have been in vain. This project is the largest single project the city of Dunn has ever undertaken. In excess of $9.8 million reinvested in our community. However, it's not about dollars and cents. The programs to be administered here are priceless. This is not a single project. This is a community. To say the least, this has been a very slow process, and rightfully so. It is a methodical process requiring numerous approvals from various agencies. From the original thought to reality has been nearly eight years. What you see here today is the results of a public-private partnership. Profit and non-profit are various and numerous partners. What I call a beautiful partnership of working together. The City of Dunn, Dunn Community Development Corporation, Central Carolina Community College, Dunn Police Athletic League, Harnett County, the federal and government and its agencies, the state of North Carolina and its agencies, and many others with only two goals in mind. And remember this, to increase our economic base, and two, to improve the livability of the people we serve. This center accomplishes both of the above goals and will replenish those goals over and over and again and again through all those that come through these doors. First, I wish to express my deep appreciation to the City Council for their unwavered support of the project to our city attorney, Tillman Pope, for his attention to detail, and to our city manager, Mr. Ronnie Alford, and especially to our assistant city manager, Mr. Stephen Newshaper, for his coordination and management of the project. This group has been awesome. To Mr. Clem Meadow, president of the Dunn Community Development Corporation, and his board for being so methodical, analytical, patient, understanding, and faithful throughout the process. Thank you for maneuvering through all the cliffhangers and skirting around all the drop dead dates. I hate to say this, but your job has just begun. <laughs> An entire community awaits you. To Scott Redinger, our consultant for assembling the group, the right people for the right job to make it happen and for educating the council on the process and advising the DC DC board along the path. And most of all, for guiding the application through the North Carolina Housing Finance Agency. To Mr. Bob Kukar, the executive director of the North Carolina Housing Finance Agency, for your willingness to accept suggested amendments to the qualified application allocation plan so that small rural towns could compete in the process. You have an awesome staff, and many thanks to you all. To Representative David Lewis, never floundering, floundering on his commitment, not just to the city of Dunn, but for all small rural towns in North Carolina, by not giving up on the reinstatement of the North Carolina historic tax credits. We will always be thankful for your persistence and your tenacity in the face of what seemed sheer defeat. <laughs> and on behalf of all this small town ladies, thank you, Representative Bliss. <coughs> to our new partner, Central Carolina Community College, thank you for coming to our campus and bringing a new dimension to this center, Mr. Brother Martin. CCCC will be an asset to the center and the community, and an asset to the community for many years to come. 
the sun, the moon, and the stars all lined up when you became our partner. And we say that you have been heaven sent. To Harnett County, Mr. Chairman and other board members here, thanks for your support of CCCC for providing the project-based rental assistance through HUD uh, and also your unwavering support of the City of Dunn. Without the project-based rental assistance, the project would not work. And many thanks for your strong support of the center. And to Harnett County, you are a wonderful part. To Community Affordable Housing Equity Corporation, what we call KHEC, thanks for securing the equity capital partners necessary to make this project sustainable. Your dedication and experience in syndicated housing and historic tax credits has been invaluable. We look forward to working with you to deliver the credits to the investors we promised. To our other partners, neither of which are less important, Weaver Cook, our construction contractor, Tish Kister, who's the architects, and I think I blew that. Cruz and Associates, our engineers. DMP Inc., the site civil engineers. ECLS, Professional Land Survey Services. Edward Turper, historic, his, historic restoration consultant. Bill Ferris, who authored the Northeast Development Plan for the city. BB&T for providing the construction loan. Select Bank and Trust, for providing the investment equity for the city of Dunn. Excel Management LLC, our leasing agents. EHG Inc., our hazardous material abatement corporation. In summary, there were in excess of 27 agencies and or entities involved in making the Dunn Enrichment Center a reality. These numbers do not include the hundreds of volunteer hours of volunteers that serve on res their respective boards and the hours incurred by the city council monitoring the process. We thank each and every one for their dedication and support throughout this project and look forward to working with you as we continue to make dreams come true. We hereby dedicate the Dunn Enrichment Center to all those who have assisted in any way to revitalize this center and to those that will use the center to improve their skill sets. May it always be used for, it, for its original purpose and may be it, it be used for the benefit of our entire community. And in his name we pray. And to God be the glory. Amen. Thank you and God bless each and every one of you. Thank you so much for making it. 
bit. Uh, you may not be able to tell it from my demeanor, but I, this is one happy event for both the college and for me. Uh, it feels to me as if I have been to this site a hundred times since we uh, made a commitment to do this in 2014. And for all that time the construction has been going on, uh, I've seen a sign out front that says, Renovations to the Hornet Training School by the Grace of God. I don't know who placed that sign, but you know, I believe that. I think another old adage applies here as well. The Lord works in mysterious ways as wonders to perform. Despite the fact that we have a very excellent Triangle South Enterprise Center, the college's small business center, and a local business incubator just a few blocks south of here, Dr. Marchand and I for a long time have wanted to increase the program that the college offers here in the Dunn area and its communities. We've talked to a lot of you about that over the time. We've looked at many options, we've talked to a lot of folks, but we've never been able to come up with that right combination. Then we got a call to come and meet with Mayor Harris in the city to determine if we had enough common interest to join this project. I remember that meeting well, and as we concluded the meeting, I said to the president, I think this is just what we've been looking for. So what does this project mean for the college, for the citizens of Dunn, and for this part of the county? I think you only have to take a quick look at the college's mission statement. That mission speaks to individual, community, and economic development through accessible, lifelong learning. That is exactly what the college will be doing here at the Dunn Center. Our program here will first provide degrees, diplomas, certificates in areas that graduates can get jobs. They will be training here that you cannot get in other areas of this county. Second, we'll be doing workforce training and updates, we'll be doing personal and community interest programming, and we'll be doing lots of senior activities. And then, thirdly, we have some options for our high school students who can take both high school students, high school courses and college courses, so when they graduate from high school, they'd be well on their way to a community college degree as well, and at no cost to the student. And by the way, this is only just six blocks from the Dunn City Center. What an opportunity for the college and what a great challenge as well. Yesterday, we hosted the eighth graders from Dunn Middle School and Coates Irwin Middle School uh, on our campus to take some campus tours. What does that have to do with this event today? In about two and a half years, some of those very eighth graders that we saw yesterday will be able to take advantage of college courses on this site while they're still in high school. While we're working in the here and now, time has a way of moving very quickly. We need the community to help us make the Dunn Center what it needs to be, a resource for students, but also a resource to improve the quality of life in the city and the county. So, as I close today, I promise to be brief. As I close today, I want to thank all of the partners who came together for this project, but especially, I want to commend Mayor Harris, the city, Clint Medley, and the DCDC on their wonderful vision for this project. Thank you. Also, the trustees of the college and President Marchant for allowing us to embrace this opportunity because there, were, there was a lot to it, to it for us as the college. So thank you very much for allowing us to do this. Also, Chairman Jim Bergen and the Harnett County Commissioners for providing the local operating funds by which we could not have done this project as well. On a personal note, Steve Neuschaefer, who has answered literally a thousand questions, either from me or those others that I said, I don't know, let's call Steve. So, where are you, Steve? I know it's right here. Thank you very much. We appreciate that. And I do want to give a shout out to our facilities and maintenance team, the faculty and staff, including Chef Ham and his students who are here today, culinary students who are here today, and the creative team. You know who you are that help make things look so good for today. As you're touring around today, 
You'll notice that not all of our details are complete, but I think you'll get a feel for what the vision is for what the college wants to do together with our other agencies here on this on this campus. I was trying to figure, you know, how when you've got to make a few remarks, you always want to have something that ends on a good high note. And it just wasn't coming to me. There were plenty of things I could talk about. But this morning I was up here, morning to your local residents was out here. He just he just came by to see what was going on and we can see what. So we talked for a little bit and we talked about the renovations and whatnot. And I think what I came up with out of that conversation is that I think together here we have taken some of the best parts of the historical past. We've combined it with programs that we know that work well right now here in the present. And then we've established a great foundation for the future as well. So we thank you for being with us here to celebrate today. Thank you.
And the discussion was, we need to put this thing together, and there's some issues we need to take care of. And I am so proud of everybody, Oscar, your your and Clem's visions and uh, your 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 work on this, the cooperation of everybody that Oscar and Clem and other people have mentioned. Uh, South Carolina is the ninth uh, largest community college in the state. Uh, my prediction is by 2020 we're going to be either fourth or fifth. But um, where other community colleges are shrinking, South Carolina is growing. And it's because of, of not only Bud, but the staff, the division, and all of the things that are going on. This is a this is an intricate part of what we're trying to do, and what the board's trying to do, and what the county's trying to do to give more options to people because people that have jobs can buy homes, they can spend money in the community, they can take advantage of all of the wonderful things that Harney County has to offer. So when I jokingly say, you better come on now, I'm really serious. You, if you're gonna, if you're gonna buy and invest in Harney County, I would do it pretty soon because there's a lot of things that are going on. Our board does a great job. Everybody's working together, getting, getting things done. We had a wonderful meeting today with folks from Duke Energy, Piedmont Natural Gas, and all of the different players that, that are going to make this community grow and get better and bigger. And David Lewis, I want to thank you. David's been involved in all of this. And one of the things David's done is gotten the county $3.7 million for education and economic development. And South Carolina is a part of that education money. We've got Stan here from the school board, I mean from the, the superintendent of schools. And, and all of those things make a big difference. Things like teacher raises and other things that, that, uh, that, that are going to impact this community. So again, on behalf of the commissioners, we're glad you're here. We're proud of this facility. We're proud of Dunn. And thank you for everybody that cooperated to make this a wonderful day. Thank you.
development and finance team. It takes a smart and a talented team to secure all the resources that brought this together. Shout out to all of them. You'll probably hear from, from more. They did a great job. I want to commend Scott Redinger in particular for being the quarterback uh, for the team. One thing Scott learned, which I also learned, is that when you dream a dream by yourself, it's just a dream. When you dream a dream with a team and with Mayor Oscar Harris, it becomes a reality. And that's really the way this came together. I have to say that when we were talking about this in the early days, Mayor Harris came to me and said, what's it going to take to get this done? And I explained it to him. And he said, I get it. You want skin in the game. Well, he came back to Don, and he did what was necessary to bring financing to this property, a great investment which will be repaid, and it made this possible. He deserves an extraordinary amount of credit. The other thing that Scott Redinger would recognize is that we also need support of a wide range of elected officials, so I'm glad that someone is here representing uh, Congresswoman Elmers, uh, a great supporter of community development investment. But our champion, Representative David Lewis, is someone who has been proactive in making sure that there are sound investments being made in smaller communities, not just in Charlotte, Raleigh, Greensboro, but in cities like Dunn. So I'll take this opportunity to thank Representative Lewis for all he has done in his many roles at the General Assembly but in particular for looking out for sensible, affordable housing investments that have made this possible. Our website says, let's make home happen. I want to thank the community of Dunn for making these senior apartments available for hundreds of seniors over the next 30 years. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. Mr. Mayor, Representative, Chairman, Mr. President, uh, Mr. Superintendent, School Board members, Commissioners, so many dignitaries. I did see Deputy Secretary Kevin Cherry from the Department of Cultural Resources. I want to thank him for being here. They played an important role with historic tax credits. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Secretary. Um, it, uh, I have a tremendous honor uh, this this afternoon, and that is to introduce Representative David Lewis. He's been mentioned so many times by so many people. When I first learned that I would have the opportunity to make this introduction, you might think to yourself that the first thing I thought was, I'm going to be introducing the chairman of the Rules Committee, the most powerful committee in the State House, the man who can tuck a bill into a drawer and make it go away. <laughs> That's true. That's true. You might think that I was thinking to myself, I'm about to introduce one of the most powerful people in the state, one of the people that makes things happen in North Carolina. But you would be surprised to learn that the first thing that came to my mind were the words of one of my favorite hymns, Blessed be the tie that binds. We're all called to be the tie that binds. To be those who are willing to step forward and serve and make our communities and our neighborhoods, our homes, our state even better. Time and time and time again, Representative David Lewis steps forward to serve and is that tie that binds. When it comes to providing affordable housing, for seniors, when it comes to providing affordable housing for homeless veterans, when it comes to the historic tax credit program so that we can revitalize rural North Carolina, Representative Lewis is in the trenches fighting hard for all of these important causes. Representative Lewis is the tie that binds. 
When it comes to making North Carolina a state that is job friendly, a state that is bringing jobs and economic development for all of our citizens, Representative Lewis is at the forefront. In fact, in 2013, he was recognized as the most business friendly legislator in our state. Representative Lewis is the tie that binds. When it comes to Harnett County and to Dunn, when it comes to the citizens who've elected him, there is no one that is working more tirelessly. There is no one who is a more zealous champion of his constituents than Representative David Lewis. In fact, Campbell University recently recognized him with their Distinguished Alumni Award. He's working hard for Harnett County. Representative Lewis is the tie that binds. As I was on my way here today, I was speaking with our Speaker of the House, Tim Moore, and told him that I was coming here to introduce David Lewis. He asked me to convey to each and every one of you how important David Lewis is to the House and how important he is to the state of North Carolina. He said to me, I've known Representative Lewis for over 20 years. He is a man of conviction. He is a man who is loyal. And he's a man who knows how to get things done. Representative Lewis is the tie that binds. We are all called to serve. We are all called to leave the world a bit better. To be the tie that binds. It's my honor and pleasure to introduce to you a man who has, time and again, stepped forward to serve. Stepped forward to make Harnett County even better. Stepped forward to make rural North Carolina even better. Stepped forward to make all of our state better. Stepped forward for our seniors. Stepped forward for our veterans. Bringing jobs to North Carolina. A man who is the tie that binds, the chairman, of the Rules Committee, the Honorable David Lewis. Truly today is a commencement. 
Mr. Tyson said in his remarks earlier that as you walk around today, you may see some things that aren't quite finished. I will submit to you that as long as there are people that want to better themselves and a community that believes in itself, the work of this facility will never be finished. I am so proud today to be a citizen of this great county and of this great town. I am so proud and excited to be a small part in launching what I am certain will be a continued beacon of hope for as long as we want to continue bettering ourselves. Thank you. Thank you. 